All right, hello class. Uh, I'm gonna walk you guys through um, some of our um, some of the, the the PowerPoint, not the whole PowerPoint, but I'm gonna walk uh, you through and lecture uh, some of the pages that that need some augmented narration to them. Um, the rest of it is um, something you'll have to read, so I'm not gonna do the whole thing. It'd be way too long. Um, you know, this is one of the differences between the online class and the uh, full lecture classes that you, I would lecture fully on the whole thing. Um, so I will hit some of the big points, not all the points. So again, you have to read uh, the, um, the whole PowerPoint on your own. But I will try to hit the good parts, all right? Okay, so um, this is uh, an introduction to, to sociology as a subject. Um, and so uh, the first slide here is 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 kind of an interesting deal because um, what we're looking at here is a map of the world, and it's kind of crazy to be thinking why why the heck would you be looking at a map um, uh, for a sociology class? This is more of a cartography or a geography map um, class map thing to do, but it's it's not. This is for uh, this is to give you an idea um, of if the, what an actual um, you know, map would look like, uh, what the world would look like um, uh, coming from outer space um, at, at maybe not the angle we, we thought it would. Um, and, uh, and I'll get to why we're looking at this thing, uh, but I call this my alien view map. You know, you're coming out the world, this is what it might look like. And it's certainly not something we're used to looking at, uh, for sure, taught in our schools um, in, the, in the Western civilization. We're not used to looking at a map like this at all. Um, so just really quickly on your own, I want you to list five ideas uh, that you have while viewing this map. Um, I mean, you know, what, what, what ideas does this make you think? What, what, what's your first reaction to this? Uh, so just take a moment and uh, list some ideas um, for yourself. You can come back. I'm not going to spend the time waiting for you to do that because it would make our video too long. Um, but just, just think about it for a second. Um, and really, one of the things that, that this tells us is that, um, you know, we project our ideas. Um, you know, this is a projection of the map that gives us a different feeling. It gives us a different, you know, cognitive view of what we're looking at, for sure. It's something that we're visually not used to. It's disorienting as heck. Um, we're very disoriented um, when we look at this. And yet this would be, uh, you know, if you could unfold the map around a cylinder and look at it, this is probably what the world would look like at certain um, from certain ways. Now, we've seen pictures of the Earth from outer space, but they're all taken from a north-south orientation. And I'll tell you what I mean by that in a second here. Um, and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to just get these four out here so you can look at them, um, you know, right now. Um, basically, what I'm, what I'm saying is that, um, you know, north is north and south is south, but it doesn't make any sense why one is on the top and one is on the bottom. That's a socially constructed idea. Um, all of our, you know, if, if this is our, if this is socially constructed, you know, how our world looks, um, it, it's hard to figure anything that we have in our life that's not socially constructed. Uh, what I mean by that is it's an idea that we come together and think about and, and create um, with each other uh, within groups, within the world. There's power dynamics. Who said the North was the North and the South was the South? You know, you look throughout history and you'll see that uh, that history has uh, you know, that the, the north up here and over here, right here, has dominated. And there's a lot of reasons for the theories about why this place, you know, these places have dominated uh, so much. And, and, and it's told the narration. It has told the story of what the earth should look like. So all our maps and all of our life is, is literally socially constructed. And that's kind of why, um, you know, I put that in there. You know, you look at your world and you have, you know, these areas that, that feed into what your life is all about. Um, you know, uh, so what inform your sociology? You know, what, what goes into the mix that some things are bigger, some things are smaller in everybody's world. Economics is a big one for people. Health, um, schemata, environment, ethnicity. I've got those twice here. I need to change that. I think I meant something else. But um, so, yeah, I mean, you can you can see that all of this goes in and informs who you are. Um, and then. My challenge to you is, um, and if I was doing this in the class, I would say, give me a topic and I'll see if I can't relate it to sociology. And as of yet, after 12 years of teaching, um, I can tell you um, with some good examples is every single thing, a light bulb relates to sociology and I could give you reasons why. Um, but, you know, it's fascinating, uh, you know, to, to have that challenge. Um, 
our next slide. Um, there's a difference between, and I need to spend some time on this slide here. Um, you know, why do why do we need sociology? What does it do? Um, and um, why you know why study it? Well, there's four main areas um, that are under the heading of sociology. One is the idea of social justice. One is the idea of social practice, social science, and then social theory. And all of these four ideas um, are under the heading of sociology. Social justice is the idea that um, we there has been some common ground that we um, as a society in, in the United States and Western Europe in particular have come to the understanding that there's some certain things that we all want to promote uh, and so that we can we can get to that goal we can make it you know we can provide justice and um, provide our goals of, of you know of healthy living um, security um, fairness all these things uh, and that sociology and the study of sociology can in some ways promote this idea of social justice. Social practice would be uh, considered um, where you actually are in the field practicing, very similar to social work, but with some different takes on it. Um, social practice would be, you know, um, for example, instructors, professors, or teachers that are very active within their field. They're, they're practicing sociologists. They go out and they, you know, uh, try to, um, make effect change in the field uh, so that, uh, you know, we're moving again towards social justice. Um, social science, however, is, is you know, the, the, the science of sociology is, is a little different than these two. It doesn't necessarily say that we're striving for justice and it's nothing that people are actually practicing. Uh, and it's, it's more of the scientific study of why we behave the way we behave and how we behave in, in certain circumstances. Um, it's very similar to psych like psychological experiments, uh, but it's done on uh, with groups in mind, how the how groups interact. And then social theory is is looking at the results of social science practice, social science and social practice, and coming up with theories to explain the bigger picture. You know, why does the world behave the way it does kind of a thing. Um, I'm not going to go over the class tips. You should be looking at these yourself, so I'm going to go through these quickly. Um, and then the next slides here, I'm actually not going to uh, go over them. They're very self-explanatory. They're very interesting, but very self-explanatory. Um, so uh, I'm not going to go over those, uh, and I'm going to scroll through this real quickly here, and um, hopefully, and get down to where we need to pick up, which is down here. And um, I just want to talk a little bit um, about whoops, about um, this idea of uh, space and race. Um, you know, one of the two things that, that are very interesting about the United States of America um, is the fact that we have in one area more ethnicities represented than anywhere else in the entire world. Now, there are places that have um, as many different cultures, uh, or, or, or very many cultures, I should say, and very many ethnicities co co cohabitating, but the United States is, is unrivaled with the amount that we have. So that's our, our big claim to fame. And then the other thing is space. Um, we have a lot of open space in the United States, um, and it's fascinating. If you look at these um, two, two areas right here, um, there's a lot of reasons for this, but um, I just want to kind of let you know about where we're living a little bit. If you look at California, um, you know, these are square land, you know, land area in square miles. This is all 2010 data. And we see that there is 155,779.22 square miles in California. For our population, that gives us 239.1 uh, square miles per person. Um, so think about that for a second. We think we're really crowded. We all live in the same areas, but for every one of you, there's 239 square miles. Um, so, you know, that, that's, that's, that's fascinating, um, to see, um, you know, how, I'm sorry, there, I'm sorry, I got these backwards, there's 87.4 miles, um, uh, for us, I got these zigzagged here, and I shouldn't, so it's California uh, land mass, and then how many, uh, square miles per person, that's still a lot, 87.4 miles per person, um, but obviously I let the cat out of the bag here, it's not as much as the United States, it's 239.1, um, uh, with, uh, with the, the land in, in square miles, so we have, you know, 3,531,905.43 square miles of land in the United States. And that averages out to 239 miles per person, square miles per person. That's still an awful lot. It's still a lot. 
Um, so, but uh, these that the, it's kind of a captivating thing to see that space and race are the two things that really define our country um, as it is. Um, and so they affect each other big time, um, and they affect how we behave. And, and uh, many of our laws and our attitudes um, have been born out of these two elements, um, and it, it makes us unique with regard to the rest of the world. And it's just a little. <laughs> this little thing I saw in the news uh, earlier today, and I just stuck it in here for for uh, to help you guys get motivated for the first uh, part of school here. This is a little dude; it's five years old, and he passed his Microsoft exam. He's an, he's an online technician; is currently working for Microsoft. Uh, <laughs> so, if he can do that, uh, man, we sure as heck can make more out of ourselves. That's for sure. So, um, the I, I really want you guys to uh, uh, pay attention to the theory. Um, outline that I'll have later on. But um, for right now, uh, that's our first PowerPoint and go through the little demography section because it's fascinating. Go these, these slides down here and check it out. Click through it yourself. Okay, I believe that is it. And I will uh, close out of this and turn off the video if I can find it. And uh, all right.